So we've moved now from AVStack or Registax where we've taken the several hundred or thousands of frames of video um, that we shot outside earlier um, and we've combined them together. We've created a much better final image um, just by combining, letting the software combine the images, create um, basically a final image out of the best of those frames and best segments of each of those frames. Um, we've wavelet sharpened it, which is a function available in both AVStack and Registax, which can basically just bring out a lot more detail in the, in the image. What I've now done is save that image um, as either a TIFF file or any of the file formats you prefer, but TIFF is a good, is a good option. Um, typically, astronomers use the FITS file format, which is a standard for astronomy or TIFF file format because you're retaining a lot of the data. It's best not to save your data at the earliest stages in JPEG format because you end up compressing and losing some of the actual image quality and data itself because JPEG is a compressed image format. So what we have here is the image that we stacked earlier uh, in AVStack. Um, it's a monochrome image, and the reason it's a monochrome image is the camera I was using, the Luminera Skynix, is a monochrome camera. Now you may be thinking, well, the sun's a colourful object. You know, it appears bright yellow or red when it's approaching sunset. That is true, but the frequencies of light that we're typically dealing with here, in this case hydrogen alpha and also you've got calcium K, are monochromatic light sources. Um, the images you may see in the magazines like Astronomy Now um, will typically be very colourful, so how do we do that? Well, first of all, what I'm going to do is just show you some of the tricks and tips I use to slightly improve upon the image um, from the outset. So we've got the image here. Um, this is the active region. This was taken at approximately a uh, focal length of about f25 to f30 using a modified Coronado PST, as we were discussing in, in the AVSAC session. Um, you can see we've got the chromospheric um, kind of uh, clouds and, and detail all around and we've got these wonderful magnetic field line structures around the active region itself. We've got the sunspot and we've got various pores around that and a nice filament coming off there but it's quite a dim um, greyish coloured image. What I'd first do is typically go to the image setting, go to adjustment um, and possibly go to the shadows and highlights. Now this can have the effect of really brightening up the image uh, quite nicely bringing in the highlights there. And it also has serves the effect of flattening the image. With hydrogen alpha filters, in particular modified PSTs or the PSC, you can get what's called a sweet spot, where part of the image may appear slightly different to the rest. If you're doing whole solar disk images, part of the image in fact won't show much hydrogen alpha detail at all. Uh, due to the nature of how the sweet spot works. It's effectively <clears throat> the optimum place where the camera is really on band at hydrogen alpha frequencies. Um, you can tune this and you can adjust it with the Etalon on a PST and most solar telescopes have this. Some of the front mounted um, Etalon solar telescopes such as some of the solar scope uh, products tend to suffer a lot less with sweet spot issues. Um, Hence, they, they do tend to cost um, a bit more than uh, other products on the market. So we've flattened out the image a little bit. What I'm now going to do is use a wonderful little plugin um, called Focus Magic. Now, Focus Magic is a forensic plugin. It costs about $20. You can get it on the internet. Um, Focus Magic is basically a way to really tighten up the focusing and sharpening of the image. It has various options for fixing motion blur, which we won't use here, but if you've got uh, an object like a car passing, for example, and it's slightly blurred um, due to the car's motion, it can correct that. Focus Magic is used for forensic analysis and used by things like police force for identification of number plates, but astronomers have really taken it to the heart in terms of its ability to really sharpen up and tighten up images. You've got to use it with care, that's the only thing. So if we select Fix Out of Focus Blur, um, instantly the software has performed its own analysis and has decided for a setting in pixels of five pixels. It's going to basically sharpen up the detail by. I tend to find that Focus Magic is a little bit over aggressive in doing this. So typically, in terms of settings, I will drop that down to maybe two or three notches, maybe a value of two or three if it starts off at five, below what it thinks. Uh, then we tend to go for the grainy image as an image source option. And again, this kind of helps clean up a little bit of any of the residual noise that's left in the image. So, it gives you a preview here. On the left side is the original image, on the right side is the sharpened up image. And we click OK. It takes a few seconds, uh, typically on a reasonably high spec uh, processor. This is a 3.2 gigahertz processor machine. Um, it does its job and we can see immediately that we've got a slightly better, uh, more resolved and uh, more detailed image. It's still monochrome, however. 
The next thing I'm going to do is adjust the levels and curves. Now this is all down to taste. Various uh, astro images, very notable, very good astro images around the world use different settings. Uh, some people go very red in their image, some people go very yellow or orange. Uh, it's all a matter of taste. There are no rights and wrongs. It's just um, a good idea to play around until you get settings that you're happy with. So calling up the levels menu, uh, which is Control L in Photoshop, we can see that we have an RGB uh, color image. What we can now do is go to each of the individual separate channels, initially the red channel, and we'll adjust the histogram center point just up a bit so it gives it a kind of nice reddish pinkish hue. We then go to the green center point and reduce that down. And now we're getting a kind of purplish image. If we now go to the blue and adjust that all the way down, we're getting more into the familiar areas of the hydrogen alpha images that you may see in the magazines. Um, and that's just with very simple levels adjustment. So even Photoshop Elements, um, which is a very low cost version of Photoshop, you could adjust um, the levels to that level, uh, pardon the pun, um, to adjust the color. We then uh, introduce curves. Now this gives you a lot more kind of control over the color balance levels. And you can do all sorts of things. You can set various points along the curve line um, so you can adjust it to, to the nth degree, as it were. But again, Control m will open up the Curves menu. This doesn't appear, sadly, in Photoshop Elements, but is available in other applications as Curves Adjustment in things like Photoshop and the GIMP, um, and the full um, version of PaintShop Pro as well. But we can adjust again, um, if we wish. We can up the red a little bit here. And it's very similar kind of controls, but it just gives you a bit more flexibility. You can also set specific points. So for example, if we wanted this to appear very white, we could set the white point on, uh, for example, a flare uh, or something appearing um, from the sun there. And we could set the black point on, say, a sunspot, should we so wish. And the blue, again, we adjust that down. And we're getting to pretty much what I would consider an almost complete color image. In terms of adding any additional detail, well, what we've got here is a filament, um, which is clearly visible, but it may need a bit of enhancing. So what I can use now is a lasso tool, and I'll set a feather on that. Now, the feathering just basically allows you to blend in any changes you make with the surround. It just blends it in and, and doesn't create a very sharp interface cutoff point. I typically take a bit more time doing this, but what I'm going to do is draw around that filament, like so. And then I'm going to use the levels control and I'm going to adjust the levels down, making the filament more visible. So you can now see that that filament is far more defined. This in a way is almost like reducing the bandpass of your hydrogen alpha filter. If you start off with a PST at one angstrom or if you're lucky um, having one uh, like myself where it's down at around about 0.7 to 0.8 angstroms, um, this can in effect give you the kind of level of detail you might see at even lower band passes. So it's, it's kind of cheating but it's an interesting way to bring out a lot more detail. We can do that again for most of the active region around here. I could just roughly outline the active region. Um, nothing too detailed. I typically take a lot more time to do this. Again, go to the level setting and you can bring that down. And now our active region stands out and has a lot more contrast against, against the rest of the surface. One final trick to bring out a bit more detail is if we can use the layers command. Right, if we copy this image, control A to select the entire image, control C to copy the image, and then control V, we effectively paste the image on top of itself. We then create a layer mask for the first layer, which is a function in Photoshop. We select the background image. We hold down the Alt key on the computer keyboard, selecting the layer, and paste that copy onto uh, the image itself. You can see it's gone back to monochrome. It's the way that the layer masks work. What we can then do is go to Image, Adjustments, and invert the image. You wonder, why would we want to do that? What we can now do, if we adjust the levels up, is bring up the detail as if it were a negative image. Bear with me, because you'll see the end result. If we go now to the filter and select Other and select High Pass, what we're now doing is effectively running a High Pass up filter over the entire image, and it's bringing out some of the contrast in the lines, uh, specifically around the magnetic regions around the active region itself and some of the chromosphere. If we select that and then go back to our original image, and then we go to the blending mode. Typically, blending mode's default is normal. If we drop that down to overlay, instantly you get more detail, possibly better color perception, 
uh, and hopefully a very nice final image.